everyone welcome back to another session in dentistry and more topic for today is trench mouth disease trench mouth disease is uh, nothing but acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis which is a rare condition and is characterized clinically by few things such as necrosis of free gingival margin the crest of gingiva and the interdental papilla these three things necrosis will be happening which are there one is free gingival margin then the crest of gingiva and interdental papilla which has got uh, many synonyms one i told you acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis then vincent's infection then acute ulceromembranous gingivitis then fuso spirochetal gingivitis so it is uh, an epidemic pattern mm, it is having an epidemic pattern and it was first uh, seen as a epidemic during the first world war among the soldiers who were in trenches so that is how it got that name trench mouth disease and it has got uh, increased uh, prevalence associated with hiv infection and it is more commonly seen among the young and middle aged adults that is around 15 to 35 years so what could be the etiology of this trench mouth disease so most of the investigators believe that it is caused by a fusiform bacillus bacteria fusiform bacillus and borrelia vincenti a spirochete borrelia vincenti which is a spirochete and it is uh, frequently occurs in presence of stress that is psychological stress so we are talking about the etiology of trench mouth disease one is fusiform bacillus and borrelia vincenti then psychological stress so this uh, stress related corticosteroids are thought to alter the t4 and t8 lymphocyte ratio and may cause a decreased neutrophilic chemotaxis and phagocytic response so chemotaxis and phago cytic response will be decreased and it can be also seen in people with immunosuppression or people with smoking local trauma poor nutritional status poor oral hygiene inadequate sleep or people with debilitating disease such as infectious mononucleosis diabetes or people with down syndrome so what are the clinical features so clinical features it is more seen in the males and gingiva becomes red and painful red and painful and the characteristic feature is it looks like a punched out erosion of the interdental papilla punched out erosion that is the most characteristic feature of anic or trench mouth disease so gingiva often covered by a pseudo membrane that is why it has got the two names pseudo membrane and punched out in trench mouth disease so this pseudo membrane it has a pronounced bleeding tendency and always produces extremely unpleasant fetid odor so all are the characteristic features of trench mouth disease and rarely the gingival lesion may extend to the mucosal surfaces of soft palate and tonsils and patient often develops headache fever malaise and lymphadenopathy and there will be always difficulty in taking food uh, because of this increased salivation and there will be a metallic taste in the mouth and most of the patients develop systemic manifestation in the form of leukocytosis leukocytosis then uh, tachycardia and other gastrointestinal disturbances so sometimes it leads to loss of attachment and the development of associated periodontitis that is necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis so this leads to this necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis and if it spreads to adjacent soft tissue it is known as necrotizing ulcerative 
ulcerative mucositis necrotizing ulcerative mucositis or necrotizing stomatitis so if the necrotizing infection extends through the mucosa to the skin of the face it is typically termed as noma or cancrum oris that is the necrotizing infection extends through the mucosa to the skin of the face that time this has got the name cancrum oris so necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis will become necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis and it can become when it spreads to soft tissue it will be necrotizing ulcerative mucositis or necrotizing stomatitis when it spreads to the face it is known as noma or cancrum oris and how do we treat the trench mouth disease so basic treatment objectives are the alleviation of acute inflammation by reducing the microbial load and removal of all those uh, necrotic tissue then alleviation of the generalized uh, problems such as fever and malaise and other correction of systemic conditions which contributes to the initiation or progression of gingival change so we can do in multiple visits the first visit we need to reduce the microbial load and remove necrotic tissues that is reduction of microbial load and removal of necrotic tissues so complete evaluation of the patient should be done and treatment of acute lesion as a primary goal topical anesthetic can be applied then uh, for 2 to 3 minutes then uh, gently we can do the swabbing remove the pseudo membrane and other non attached surface debris and clean with warm water then ultrasonic scaling may be preferable with minimal pressure against the soft tissue then subgingival scaling and curettage uh, can be performed during the first visit but the problem of this uh, subgingival scaling there are chances of infection to be spread uh, to the deeper tissues and it can cause bacteremia and we can also put the patient into antibiotics such as amoxicillin 500 mg uh, for 10 days or erythromycin or metronidazole twice for 7 days then we need to instruct the patient uh, not to take alcohol or tobacco then ask the patient to rinse the mixture of 3 percentage hydrogen peroxide and warm water every 2 hours or twice daily or also we can use 0.12 percentage chlorhexidine and always a patient should get adequate rest and avoid excessive physical activities and confine the tooth brushing we should instruct to confine the tooth brushing uh, to the removal of surface debris with a bland dentifrice and an ultra soft brush and analgesics can be prescribed uh, anesthetics during the second visit that is after 2 days patient is evaluated for the resolution of signs and other symptoms lesion uh, it is erythematous without a superficial pseudo membrane and there will be shrinkage of gingiva which may expose the previously covered calculus which is gently removed and we can repeat the instructions of the first visit so in second visit only thing is we need to evaluate properly of the lesion and if there is any gingival shrinkage cleaning or the scaling can be done on third visit that is after this is after 2 days then this is after 5 days that is after second visit that is maybe uh, it take a long time for the third visit so patient is evaluated again for the symptoms and a comprehensive plan for the management of patient's periodontal condition is formulated at this stage again the hydrogen peroxide rinsing and chlorhexidine mouthwash can be continued and all other supportive therapy such as uh, rest appropriate fluid intake and soft uh, nutritious diet and also we can perform the scaling and root planing only if required and patient should be uh, re-instructed about the plaque uh, control measures and proper counseling regarding the nutrition and smoking cessation and uh, we can uh, start the treatment for pockets or uh, the flap or other procedures and then patient should be reevaluated after one month 
so that is how we manage the trench mouth and we can contour the gingiva using uh, surgical methods such as uh, plastic surgery uh, or any other technique we can uh, use so basically uh, it takes uh, one month time for this uh, disease to get cured but it depends on lots of factors uh, patients health systemic factors local factors patients habits and the diet and the proper management of this plague so all these can uh, bring back the condition almost to normal so that is all about the trench mouth disease it's commonly asked short note in oral pathology so i'll come up with a new topic in the industry amla thank you